In today's KSAT Q&A, it is Wednesday, so we are joined by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg to talk about a variety of topics from masks to vaccines to the vaccination rate in our community. Uh, let's get right to it, Mayor. Uh, thanks for being here. First of all, I wanted to ask you about sort of the the caveat you gave to what seemed like encouraging news in yesterday's COVID briefing that our positivity rate has dropped. It is now around 13 yep. percent, a 3 percent decrease from last week. But you gave a word of caution there saying sure. there's something we need to keep in mind when looking at that number. Can you explain that? Sure. Yeah, the positivity rate is one indicator uh, of many that we look to see with the severity of COVID-19 in our community. And we've we've cautioned that from the from the very beginning that we have several different indicators that we look at consistently. And obviously, we like to see them move in the right direction. We have one go in the right direction. That's good. But we need to see others. And right now, the hospitalizations are still very high. Our new admissions are still well over 100. I think it was about 150 today in the last 24 hours. Uh, and also something that's critical in terms of the hospital stress and the stress on the overall medical system is that our EMS responses, um, the number of units that are out and how many responses, calls that they have to go for COVID related causes is at an all time high. It's remained that way. And in fact, for a few minutes today, we are again out of EMS units uh, to respond to medical emergencies because of the large number of calls for COVID related cases. So there are some things moving in the right direction. Positivity rate is one and, and, and some of that has to do with more testing happening. But again, the overall situation in San Antonio with regard to COVID-19 is severe uh, and that is our current risk level. That is so eye opening that for at least a second time that we know of now, there have been no yeah. EMS units available for the entire city of San Antonio, city of more than a million people. That's right. Uh, for a few minutes today, that's the condition that we were in because of the large number of calls that, that were going on. Um, and, you know, obviously we have to uh, scramble resources and there are other alternatives that the fire department has to deploy. But the, the, the overall uh, picture here is that it, our medical system, which EMS is a vital part of that, is under severe stress because of the caseload that they're having to respond to. And that's why we keep emphasizing again, over and over again, the tools that we have to prevent this preventable sickness and death that's occurring as a result of the Delta variant. And that is, if you're eligible to get vaccinated, get vaccinated, that's number one. The second is, regardless of your vaccine status, we have to slow down the transmission of this virus, and we do that by wearing masks. And let's talk about masks, something a lot of people, especially parents, teachers, school staff, paying attention to right now. So we know that the state is now looking to the Texas Supreme Court to make a ruling on the city's current injunction in place that allows for masks to be required in schools. We know the Supreme Court already ruled against the restraining order that preceded that. That. So if the Supreme Court sides with the state on this mask requirement, will that be the end of the requirement in San Antonio? Well, sure. Um, and I don't believe so. So let, let's take a let, let's take a look at some facts for a minute. There's been over 70 independent school districts all across the state that have already implemented their own mask mandates, uh, knowing that they potentially could be in, in uh, at legal risk because of uh, a governor and an AG that are quite simply pandering instead of protecting people. So what we are making sure people understand is that regardless of the debates that are going on in the court system, which are about the governor's unconstitutional use of his emergency powers, restricting local public health authorities from doing what they have to do to mitigate the disaster, regardless of the debate about that, the debate over the science of mask wearing and, and vaccines is not up for debate. There is no disputing the facts. Masks work. Vaccines work. If we want to put an end to the pandemic, we're going to use them. And that's why they ought to be mandated in, in congregate settings, large facilities that have people, lots of people who are in there that are not eligible to be vaccinated, particularly, again, the young people under 12 and people in close quarters. If we want to protect each other, slow down the transmission of the virus and, and save lives, we need to get vaccinated and we need to use masks. And that is not up for debate. 
The governor's executive order that prevented a mask mandate in schools also said that no vaccine mandates could be made uh, for vaccines under an emergency use authorization. There was a new executive order today from the governor's office saying that now applies to vaccines, even if they have full FDA approval, which we know Pfizer uh, met that standard uh, this week. So is a vaccine mandate something the city is considering for employees? And if so, is this latest executive order one the city would fight? So, you know, what, what the governor has done with GA39 uh, and, and now changing the order that he put in place to restrict emergency use authorized vaccines, now restricting mandates on fully authorized FDA approved vaccines is really a head scratcher considering the fact that we have va vaccine mandates for a lot of things to keep people safe. I don't know what his intentions are. Uh, they are clearly not what ours are, which are about protecting communities. Now, with regard to vaccine mandates uh, in, in government institutions like the city or, or uh, the, the county or any place like that, what, what the city and the county have done with employees so far has to incentivize for employees getting vaccinated as quickly as possible. That's what our city manager has implemented thus far. Obviously, we're gonna take a look at the vaccine rates uh, and do what we need to do to ensure that our employees and the public are protected. And we know that is to make sure that our vaccination rates get up uh, as high as they can and ultimately up to 100 percent. And let's talk about the vaccination rate for our entire community. You've said there might be a bit of confusion there when we're looking at that number. Uh, with regard to the vaccine, absolutely, vaccine rate. So a lot of people will look at, you know, the, the federal administration goal of getting the 70 percent vaccination rate. Um, and, and we got there uh, in, a couple of months ago. But what that number represents is those who are eligible for the vaccine. If you take a look at total population, which is what we need to be looking at for herd immunity, it's much lower than that. It's roughly around 50 percent for the for the community here in San Antonio. And why that's important is that we have a large swath of our population that is simply not eligible for the vaccine, uh, including about 20 percent of our population who are 12 and younger and who are not eligible for the vaccine. So if you look at the overall population who are vaccinated, it's, it's closer to 50 percent. And that's, again, very important because we, we know that in order to get to herd immunity, we have a lot of work to do, and it starts with everyone who is eligible going to get vaccinated. And we've, we've got some work to do, and, and if you are one of those folks who have not gotten vaccinated yet but are eligible, please go do it now because the longer you sit on the sidelines, the more you prolong this crisis for everyone. And we should mention once again, there are so many opportunities all around town to get that vaccine, which again is free. Mayor Ron Nirenberg, Free, thanks. safe and effective. Thanks, Mayor, Thank for you, your Mara. time. As always, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much, Mara. Have a good night. You too. We'll be right back.